What's going on guys? I'm back with another welding video. I've been watching your comments. I've been seeing all the messages. Yeah, I want more welding videos. So today I hit one of my boys up, Daniel, AKA Weld Warrior. He's the one who did this uh, welding procedure for y'all. A lot of y'all hit me up about getting on one-on-one, -on -one, but honestly, my time is real low and I work a lot right now, but he's available right now. You can come to the spot, he can get down on TIG, 6010, whatever you need. He's certified, he can get the job done. A little backstory, when I first moved to Houston, the first job that I got was at a shop and that's where I met him at. Uh, he's actually the guy that let me use his machine. When I first broke out as a rig welder, I didn't have a machine and he had one. He actually let me use it for a while until I got situated and got enough money to buy my own. So special shout out to him. But anyway, let me show you what we got going on. Um, like I said, it's the three inch schedule 80. Uh, we capped it with 70 S6. Now, I want y'all to look at this cap. It looks amazing. You can see all the ripples in there. It's nice and uniform. The temperatures and settings that we use to get to this uh, is really easy. If we could do it, you could do it too. We're gonna be doing a 5G takeout all the way out. I got my boy Daniel. He's gonna be doing this procedure for y'all. I'm gonna be recording. Usually I'm the one who welds, but Today, I'll just be uh, recording for y'all. Hope y'all enjoy this video. Y'all know we gotta do TIG. Make sure y'all clean everything better than we did. We kinda just half-assed it, but if you go and test, make sure all this is clean and the inside is shiny. We're about to get this ready. We're gonna be using a 316 gap for this procedure. Okay guys, let's jump into it. Uh, he has a bigger gap on top because the bevels of this pipe was messed up. So watch the technique that he uses. He first builds the bridge then he starts feeding wire into your puddle. Uh, notice how he's following his TIG rod with his tungsten. He follows it back and forth following each other because the gap is so big you have to be able to build that bridge and you have to satisfy that puddle. So you're pushing and weaving with the tungsten sticking up. We're going to be doing this position in 5G. We're using 70S6 for the wire and you know uh 316 gap we only got two tacks one at 12 and one at six and that's all we're gonna do and we're gonna get to work whenever you start make sure you heat up your tack before you start doing the root so you can have a good stop and start if you're having trouble with your root because it's coming out too flat the problem is that you're not feeding enough wire into the puddle it's really important that you keep on consistently feeding that puddle so that root can build on the inside um, with these bigger gaps, you have to feed more wire, but it's all about up to you on what you like. Some people like 532. Me personally, I like 316. That's what I go with. A lot of people like smaller gaps because you don't have to fill it up with metal that much. But to me, that's what I'm comfortable with. And I know for a fact, it's gonna shoot x-ray. With these bigger gaps, you can actually see uh, whenever you're breaking those walls down. As you can see, the walls are being broke down. He's going from left wall to right wall, feeding that puddle with that wire right in the middle. That is the key to a good root is to satisfy that puddle. I want y'all to pay attention to the right side of the screen. I want you to see how he's pushing that rod in there. You know, you, you have to feed that puddle, guys. That's the key to this TIG stuff. That's the key to having a good root. Look at his hand. He's consistently pushing in there and he's moving back and forth. You know it's, it's really easy uh, whenever you do start doing TIG that's probably the most important thing for you to learn is to be able to feed and weld at the same time that's why a lot of people can't do TIG man because you have to use both hands you have to be conscious of your left hand and your right hand at the same time but it gets easier with practice we just ran uh, the whole bottom all the way to the top we decided to stop right there before i tie in he's going to jump to the other side and look at this root man beautiful we're about to do the tie-in right here uh make sure to always feather your tacks and it needs to be feathered really good just how he has it here you know you got a good feather tack whenever it starts to turn blue as you can see right here then that's how you know you're ready to uh tie in so he's gonna go ahead and tie in and i'm gonna give you an arc shot of how to get a good tie-in on there a good method to get in a good tie-in is the dip method. Um, watch how he's still in the puddle, he's still feeding it, but when it gets closer to his tie-in, he's gonna dip it, spread the metal out, 
dip it back again, spread the metal out until he ties in. Now, once you tie in, you can just leave the rod in there and just keep putting metal onto your pipe. Uh, you don't want to stop it right there when you tie in because it will suck it up. You want to keep on feeding more metal, maybe a half an inch, then you can stop and pull out. We just finished doing the root. Uh, whenever y'all finish in the room, make sure y'all clean it out. If you're new to welding, just grind it. Now, if you have experience, most experienced welders, we just hit it with the wire wheel. But for today's video, we're going to hit it up with the grinding wheel to make sure everything is good. Root pass is done, so now we're hopping into the hot pass. I'm running third gear, 60 in the remote. It's kind of hard to give y'all amperage for those of y'all who are using the electric machines, but I'm guessing it's about 160 amps. That's a pretty good start if you're learning because it's not too, too cold and it's not too, too hot for the hot pass. The key to having a successful hot pass is to walk that cup according to your heat while leaving that wire in that puddle. Like I said, you can run hotter, but you also need to be traveling much faster because if you're not traveling fast enough, it's gonna cause you to have suck back and that root could fall down and that will cause you to either fail x-ray or even worse, fail your first welding test. So anyway, uh, the key, like I said, the key to this is just to satisfy that puddle with the heat. Another good way to know that you're burning hot enough is by looking inside the pipe. Do you see how cherry red that is? That's the color you wanna go with. That's how you know you're putting enough heat on there and you're not too cold. If it looks a little bit less than that, you might wanna consider turning it up. If it looks more than that, then that's in the red zone because you're running way too hot. But you want it cherry red. Remember that color, cherry red. That's what you want it to look like. Okay, our hot pass is done. Now we're jumping into the first fill. Still third gear. Now we up 75 on the remote. Like I said, it's really hard to give y'all a certain amperage, but I'm guessing he's running about 180 amps for the fill. You can always turn it up whenever you start uh, doing your fill because you know you have enough metal in there that you won't mess it up. And whenever you crank it up, you can stack that metal in there with no problem. I'm really big on quality and production, and this is where your production is gonna kick in by cranking that machine up and just stacking that metal in there. Now we jumping on to fill number three. We're gonna keep the same settings on the machine. We're gonna run the same heat. Um, that is hot enough to flush the pipe out. Now, uh, one thing I want you to work on is by fill number three, you should be flushed out by then. Uh, one thing that y'all need to work on is being able to stack that metal in there. I'm really, really big on production and, and quality. But right now, this is where the production counts on. You know, you wanna have good speed on you. So make sure that you're pushing that, that metal into that pipe, man. Don't be scared to push it in because you're running really, really hot. You will not have any lack of fusion if you're running about 180 amps. That that heat will spread that metal out easily. So make sure that y'all really working on production, man. Uh, whenever you get to these fields, these guys want to see that you're able to knock these pipe out quick. And you, they can count on you for a hot job or anything. And that's what's going to give you this job security. Okay, so we got everything flushed out. Uh, whenever you're doing these pipe, you don't want it too over flushed. You just want it flushed out nice and even. If you do got some high spots, just go ahead and uh, grind it off so you could get a good cap on there because that will mess you up. But this is what you want it to look like right here. Nice and evenly flushed. Uh, another pro tip. Whenever you cap, if you wanted to get some nice ripples in there, like how we got going on right here, uh, make sure your tungsten stays clean, nice and sharp, just how we have it right here. That will help your cap out. That will make it look really, really, really nice. And uh, that will make your cap pop. Okay guys, we have everything flushed out. Now we're jumping into the cap. For the cap, notice how we drop the temperature down to third gear and 60. So I'm guessing we're running about 160 amps. Now this is where quality comes in. Whenever you're doing the cap, you wanna be able to take your time, walk that cup up, and slowly spread that metal out. This will make your cap look really, really slick because you're taking your time. And you know, quality is really important. Notice how he's walking the cup back and forth while traveling up. Do y'all see the little lines on the left and right? 
you don't want to go over that because your cat won't look too fat you know you want to be able to make it look slick so don't go over that line and that's why it's really really important not to over flush your fill because you will not be able to see that line that good and sometimes you can go crooked so that's the key into keeping a nice straight cap is by following those two lines that you see how you doing guys nah 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 not how you doing guys what's up nah, I'm welders nah, I'm just kidding guys <laughs> hello guys my name is Daniel Mesa aka well Warrior welds and I hope that today I was able to teach y'all something uh, the best way I could you know these methods work and uh, for those of y'all who want to take it to the next level I'll be teaching here in my house if you need anything hit up Rico or hit me up via Instagram at uh, well word welds or hit up or Rico's unfortunately he can't do it at the moment because of his job all right guys don't forget to like and subscribe and this is all I have for today See you on the next video.